Hey everyone, so my name is Zach Vines and what we're going to look at today is how to calculate a gain or loss on sale in our accounting classes. So kind of the meat of what's going on right here is that we have some asset and based on you know up to this point in your class or we have another video where it's the uh, straight line double declining and some of your digits depreciation when you purchase an asset you depreciate it over time and you know by asset it's usually a long-term asset so a piece of equipment or a building or some vehicle something that's going to have a long-term benefit to us instead of recognizing the entire expense for that asset immediately when we purchase it we spread that burden and we spread that expense over a period of time through some depreciation method. So you have the cost of your asset and you have the amount that you've depreciated from that asset. When you subtract those two, that gives you your book value or the undepreciated portion of your asset. So basically you have an asset with a certain book value based on how far along it's been depreciated. And then you sell it mid uh, period. So instead of depreciating it entirely, you sell it in the middle of its useful life for some price that's either above or below that book value. So think of the book value, again, it's the cost that you paid for that asset minus the accumulated depreciation or all the depreciation that you've incurred on that asset up to this point in time. So when you take the difference between those two, it's really the undepreciated portion of your asset or the amount of that asset that still remains to be depreciated. You can think about it like it's the value of your asset at that point in time. It's not literally what it's worth right now. It, and, you know, on our books, it's still recorded at historical cost, but kind of wrap your head around the concept of book value. It's basically what it's worth on our books right now, meaning that it's the cost less what has been depreciated off of it. If I sell that asset for a certain price, let's say it's above my book value, on my books, it's worth, and again, I use that sparingly because it's not actually what it's worth, but to, you know, the book value itself is at a certain amount, and I sell it for a price above that book value, let's say. Well, if it's worth a certain amount on my books, and then I sell it for something that's higher than what it's worth, that's a gain for me. So if the selling price is greater than my book value, that would be considered a gain, because what it's worth is less than what I got sold for. So that's awesome. Like I got more cash than I expected to get based on the worth of my asset at that time, so we're good to go. However, it's not guaranteed that we're gonna sell it for a price above the book value. Oftentimes we're gonna sell it for something below the book value. So we may have an asset that's worth you know, a certain amount. The price we have to sell it for is much lower than that. So that's a loss because we still had more useful life to gain out of the asset based on our depreciation. And yet we could only sell it for an amount that was less than what it was worth on our books. That's going to be considered a loss. So that's sort of the overview of gains and losses. I wanna show you two quick examples, one for a gain, one for a loss to wrap everything up. So let's do that right now. Okay, so now we're just going to go through this example to demonstrate exactly what we talked about, where we're going to calculate our book value, compare it to the selling price, and decide whether or not it's a gain or loss, and then I'm going to show you the journal entries that go along with that. So what we have here is that we have an asset that costs $100,000 and has a $20,000 salvage value. We think it has a four-year useful life, and we're going to depreciate it straight line depreciation. If you're not sure what that is, then I'll put the link in the description for the depreciation video we have. You'll have to know how to do that in order to solve these. Um, so we bought it on on 1-1-2019 and we sold it for $75,000 on 1-1-21. So you can see that even though it's a four year useful life, we only held on to it from 1-1-2019 to 1-1-2021. And so it's two years of depreciation we've recorded before we sell it. So here's how we're gonna go along. First, we're just trying to calculate the gain or loss. So to start off with, we need to know what our book value is because that's what we're gonna compare against our $75,000 that it sold for to decide excuse me, whether or not it's a gain or a loss. So the book value is again, the cost minus your accumulated depreciation. So the cost of the asset was just the $100,000. It's what we had to pay to get that asset. So that's not too bad. The accumulated depreciation, however, I had to do a separate calculation for that. If we're depreciating it straight line, that means that the formula we're using is your cost minus your salvage value Take that value and divide it by your useful life. So we have a $100,000 cost, a $20,000 salvage value, cost minus salvage value is 80,000, divided by a four year useful life is gonna give you $20,000 a year in depreciation. You can see if that's what we do per year, if I'm going from 
uh, 1 1 2019 to 1 1 2021, that's two years worth of depreciation that I took. All of 2019, all of 2020 puts me right at the beginning of 2021 or 1 1 2021. So 20,000 a year times two years is $40,000 of accumulated depreciation and thus my cost of 100,000 minus the overall depreciation that's accumulated up to that point of 40,000 leaves me with $60,000 of book value. So. The st second step, we're just saying we sold it for $75,000 and the book value is $60,000. So if it's worth that much on my books and then I sell it for $15,000 more, then I just take my selling price, I subtract my book value, and it leaves me with a positive 15,000, which indicates to me that that's a gain. So because we sold it for something that's higher than our book value, it's considered a gain. So the third step is just to do the journal entry for it. So I sold the asset for $75,000. So I debit or increase cash by $75,000. Now the accumulated depreciation, I'm keeping that running tally of the depreciation I've accumulated on this asset and that holds naturally a credit balance. It's a contra account. But once I'm getting rid of that account, you know, because I don't have the asset anymore, so I don't want to keep the depreciation associated with the asset on my book still, so I got to get rid of it. So I debit my accumulated depreciation of 40000 because that's what we calculated for the depreciation on that asset up to that point. Then the equipment is now no longer mine. So it was worth $100,000. That's what I recorded it on my books originally. So I reduce my equipment account or credit my equipment account by that $100,000. And then finally, because I had a $15,000 gain, gains hold a credit balance, losses hold a debit balance, and thus my plug would be that $15,000 gain right there. So that's a gain example. We're going to do the exact same thing for a loss example where we're going to use all the same information but we're just changing the selling price to instead of it being $75,000, it's now $40,000. So the, we're going to go through the exact same steps. So for number one, we just need to find what is our book value. It's just that $60,000. It's the exact same calculation from before. Just see what your cost is, subtract out your accumulated depreciation which you'll probably have to calculate, subtract the two, and you get your book value, exact same thing as before. Then for number two, we sold it for $40,000 this time. Well, if it was worth $60,000 on my books, and I was only able to sell it for $40,000, then I take my selling price of $40,000, subtract out my book value of $60,000, and I'm in the hole, I'm negative by $20,000. So that's a loss, because I was only, a, I was only able to sell it for $20,000 less than what it was showed up on my books, the book value of it. So the journal entry to recognize that is very similar to the other one, where I'm going to recognize the cash, increase my cash, or debit that account by the amount of cash that I earned when I sold it. I sold it for $40,000, I increased my cash by $40,000. I also still have to get rid of that accumulated depreciation because I no longer have the asset that that depreciation is tied to. So get it off your books. Debit your accumulated depreciation, reduce the balance in that account by $40,000. Because we had a loss of $20,000 that holds a debit balance, I'm going to debit loss or increase the balance in my loss account by $20,000. And then exactly like before, you're getting rid of that equipment. So you're reducing the balance in what you recorded it as originally, get it off your books, credit it by that $100,000. So you can see it's just a series of steps to go through. Start off by finding your book value so you can compare that book value to your selling price. If your selling price is greater than your book value, that's going to be a gain. If your selling price was less than your book value, that's a loss. So I hope that gives you a good framework to calculate your gains and losses. So thank you for watching and I hope that helped.